रिवॉर्डिंग टू एच बॉडी सो आई एम हरदीप विश्वास एकेडमिक काउंसलर ऑफ इंडिया सो टुडे दिस इज एमएमपीसी 002 कोर्स टाइटल इज ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट सो टुडे एक्चुअली आई हैव टू डिस्कस अबाउट योर एम्प्लॉई एम्प्लॉयर रिलेशंस दैट इज योर ब्लॉक नंबर 4 इज एम्प्लॉयर एंड एम्प्लॉई रिलेशंस so there are you know what to help is regarding the your employee empowerment and uh, unit number 13 is a grievance handling and the discipline management and the procedures and your unions and the associations this part we have to discuss so first try to clear the concept of the employer employee relations what is the how to create develop the relationship within the organizations so basically uh, here try to emphasize so when the people are recruiting the employee are recruiting the organizations so after that they have to develop and they have to the relationships has to be improved and they so that only they can empower They have to empower them so that they can do the work as per their own, and productivity can be improved. So, empowerment is basically the process of passing the authority and the responsibility to individuals at the lower levels in the organization level. So, advantage of the empowerment, the empowerment. Are said to include higher quality products and services, less absenteeism, lower turnover, better decision making, and better problem solving. In turn, the result in the general in the greater organizational effectiveness. The Dishons in the 1984 has written. So, what are the characteristics of the empowered organization companies with a high level of job autonomy? Usually, have the following characteristics. Means, how to define these companies and power? How to define this type of category? This type of uh, some of the characteristics should have these particular conditions. First is uh, they invest a lot of time and effort in hiring to make sure the recruits can handle the workplace, the freedom, their organizational hierarchies, flat. Number two is they set loose guidelines so workers know their decision making parameters. Shouldn't be so hard. A no complex nature of guidelines should be. Third is your accountability in the paramount results matter from more than the process. Fourth is high quality performance is always expected. And five is openness and strong communication encourage. Employee satisfaction is a core value because all these things, when the organizations are, you can say there is a empowered organizations. Until or not, unless the employees are not, until or not, unless the employees are to be satisfied, then only we can say the yes, the organizations are empowered. Some of the guidelines. For introducing the impact, then understanding the changes to achieve this, selecting the strong leaders, involve the involving the people, creating the transition project teams, providing the training in new skills. 
then your servicing the symbol of the change, acknowledging and the rewarding the achievements. These are all our basic needs for the empowerment. Basic uh, benefits of the empowerment benefits the employee organizations self by creating an environment which encourages proactively problem solving. Means the environment should be such a way so that the employees can happily work there and collaboratively they can do these things. So what are the problems that will come? Proactively, they can do it. For employees, empowerment provides a sense of high esteem, high degree of involvement, involvement as a participant, participations, a learning environment opportunity for the personal growth and development and a greater sense of achievement. Replacing the fear and greed hierarchy with a network of the power, empower. So there are uh, various forms of, and styles of the participative management. One of them is widely applied and the practice is the quality subjects. Where the some of the people in the same type of jobs they are doing, and every day they have a some get together and they have to solve their problems throughout the day. And the some of the solutions they can identify. So that is a team as a group. So that ought to be in a practice. This leads to a good participative environment and greater acceptability of the decisions. So they day to day, every day, they have a meeting in the end of the work or at the end of the day, they sit together and try to identify where the problems are there the solution they can start uh, they are on their own and they can solve this so this is quality quality uh, circles are very important so where the people can sit together discuss and finally they can uh, workers participation in management the philosophy understanding the workers' participation risks and is a demonstrate democratic participation in decision making in the maximum employer and employee collaboration, minimum state interventions, realization of a greater measure of the social justice then greater individual industrial efficiency and higher level of organizational health and effectiveness. So, it is some of the philosophy or uh, what is the stress is given for the workers' participation. So this is the thing has to be followed. So, what are the objectives? of the workers' participation in the management and the objectives of the workers' participation in management are as follows. Basically, uh, to raise the level of the motivation of the workers by the closer involvement. As we have seen, and this is a uh, common phenomenon, when people are closer and together, they are discussing, they can share their values, share their respects, and ultimately, some motivation will come off from each other. 
So raise the level of motivation by the closer involvement. Number two is that to provide the opportunity for expressions and to provide a sense of importance to workers. Yes, you are also important persons. Your value addition is required. So that type of expression is required. Third is to develop the ties of the understanding leading to better effort and harmony. Then to act on a device to counterbalance powers of the members. So counterbalance is very important. Then to act as a panacea for solving the industrial relations problem. Now, how to form this? The forms of the participation, how to form this formation of the uh, team. So for that, one of the process is collecting bargaining. It results in the collaborative arguments which lay down the certain rules and the conditions of service in an established During the uh, collective uh, bargaining, participation is there and all the views, all the views are taken care by the virtue of discussions, by the virtue of your debates. And finally, a collective agreement appears where everybody are willing to do these things, that sort of concern or uh, agreement, willingness are to be authenticated here itself. And maybe sometimes it should be an assigned copy. Yes, so we are agree on this particular this point. So some collective uh, bargaining process are required. Obviously, there will be some certain rules and conditions are there. You know, beyond this, and during the discussions, you have to obey some of the rules. You cannot beyond the boundary, you cannot go. Then another uh, form is your what comes. These are exclusively bodies of the of the employees. So there is a council such as what are the work uh, related in regards to your work matters are there the works are loading basically the loading of the works are rationally is given or not. So that council will be Verify the council will be look after the matters and some of the bodies are there, yes, so that all the employees are equally loaded and they are also participating in the work with a full seam and with the dedications. Dedicatedly, they can do this. Another form is your joint management councils and the committees. So mainly these bodies are consulted and advisory with relation making left uh, to the top management, basically the joint management councils and the committee, they are a councils where the committees are deciding the things and what are the outcomes? What are the outcomes they have to put up to the management? for their further decision making process taken by the and final decision will be taken by the top so we can say it is a, some of the support systems and just support systems so that the decision taken by the top management should be accurate 
and considering the benefit of the employees, they are taking the decisions. So decisions should not be any bias. Decisions should not be. Another form is your board representations, where the uh, chairman and the other directors board are there. They have to decide the things, and uh, whatever the decisions they have to take care for the future growth of the companies. Workers' ownerships of the enterprise. Where well, workers ownership of the price means their shares are there. In that case, the workers are also a participant in the decision making process. They have to give their opinion also. And finally, the decision are has been finalized. Now, any effective participations, some prerequisites. Conditions are required for the success of any scheme of the participative management response. Firstly, there should be a strong democratic and representative unionism for the success of participative management. Secondly, there should be Mutually agreed and clearly formulated, formulated objectives for the participation to succeed. And thirdly, there should be a feeling of participation at all levels, because those who are coming and participating, they should have a feeling. And fourthly, there should be effective consultations of the workers by the management. Because when the during the consultation process, workers consultation is very much important. <coughs> and management is also to be keen to learn, keen to hear of all these things, what the workers are saying. So that type of uh, communications. And uh, that are to be fulfilled. Fifth is uh, your both the management and the workers must have full faith in the soundness of the philosophy underlying the concept of labor participation. So trust and uh, faith is an important part. Both the management and the workers. Both has to be uh, respect, faith is important. Now, coming to career development is the function of the human resource management, which aims to provide the opportunities for the people to develop their careers. And here, the career planning, the succession planning, to major parts of the career. Training and development plays a major role in the career development and the, some of the functions in the career planning and the things are there. Some trained analysis are there based on these uh, different steps are there. It includes the steps of the years. How to analyze the things? It means the potentiality of particular employees are to be identified. Select the appropriate business factors which should be best available in the predictor. The, as the issue of the predictors and the trade analysis. Second is plot the historical trend of the business factors, the relations of the number of employees the ratio of the employees to the business factors will provide a labor productivity ratio to some of the process, analytical process. Then you compare the productivity ratio 
for at least the uh, last five years. And the fourth is your uh, the calculative the human resource demand by the dividing the business factors by the productivity ratio. And finally, the your the project the human resource demand out of the time. So it is some of the analysis process. There are so many other processes are also there. That is your modeling or the your multiple productive techniques are there. So all other techniques are basically the predict the employees' needs. Why what the employee are they really required? Some most advanced methods are there. And at the same time, we have to see the cost of the development. That uh, it is part of your forecasting methods. So, which is to be quite high because you see the advancement of the technology and the computer software have made rather sophisticated forecasting more. Uh, affordable to even the small business. So, predictions. This, this employees how to develop or what type of employee are required. So, before that you can uh, predict. So, accordingly you can plan all these things. So, many approaches are there, quantity, qualitative approaches in your of the expert forecast are there. And there are some of the techniques that the delta techniques are also there. Where the if you can take the views or take the details of the employees and finally they yeah. So it attends to basically delta techniques most of the times coming in the exam also as a short note. So by doing one of the techniques, it attempts to decrease the subjectivity of the forecast by involving a group of pre-selected individuals and the soliciting and the summarizing the judgment. It's a group decision making process and it is a it works better this situation where the dynamic technological changes are affecting the stopping levels. So where is it very important? Ideally, in the basically the HR analysis planning, both quantitative and the qualitative approaches are there. So there are uh, workforce analysis. Out what are the labor turnover rate, absenteeism rate, then your workload analysis, job analysis. We all are finding basically finding out the abilities of the skills and the required to be job efficient. So all these things are the parameters, or you can say. Uh, identify the skills required, what type of skills are required in particular job, so all are to identify the qualifications and the experience required to them for job analysis purpose. Again, the job analysis you can see there are two parts to uh, what are uh, now again after that. Now you have to measure the effect of the workers' participation in the management. I think some link was there uh, in the earlier slides. We have discussed already. Certain conditions should be satisfied because the time of during the discussions, some of the uh, conditions has to be set. The one is the managerial attitudes, union cooperations. Many participations and the workers' attitudes, all these things are the conditions are to be put. Because manager, if they are not willing to discuss, not able to consult the uh, 
workers then delay that meeting that participation can be fulfilled. So many has to be that type of attitude should be there. Yes, the workers he is our subordinate and uh, he is also a part of our company. So you have to listen carefully. That type of attitude as manager has to show. At the same time, union cooperation is also there. union is also to be cooperate always. That barrier should not be there. So both way, managers some responsibilities are there to fulfill how to fulfill, how to create to make the workers' participation more effective or more successful. So both ways should be initiative has to be shown. So in their working life, because the employees is to get dissatisfied most of the cases. The various aspects of the working, maybe with the attitude of the managers, policy of the company, and the working conditions, of behavior of the quality. That's why sometimes they are reluctant to discuss with the managers because already the work uh, employees are suffering a lot, uh, maybe personally, or maybe in the home front, or maybe the environmentally, or in the socially. So that's why sometimes they are reluctant. So. So, policy of the company should be in such a way so that they can encourage. So, the employers try to ignore and the, uh, suppress the grievances. Now, dissatisfaction is one of the main things. We are now coming to living and dealing process we have to see. Where, how to, what type of grievances and where the Sources of the factors of the grievances. So one of the things is dissatisfaction. Because of that, the grievance starts. The first stage is dissatisfaction. Then second stage here complain, and third is the grievance. People or any employee or any human. Stated will not go to the grievance. First, it's the feels of dissatisfaction, feel irritating, maybe the things are not convincing, it's not uncomfortable in that situation. Maybe due to any disease, maybe salary, maybe job, maybe the attitude of the uh, managers, uh, relationships, what are the way this will really start. That is the initial stages. Then after that, if the initial stages does not redress or no solution, no solution has been uh, done by anybody from the personal side or to the manager side, then it may be create a company that the employees can be complained to the managers directly or they may complain to the seniors also or altogether that complaints may go to the personal departments. So this is the second stage and even though after that there is no remedies, there is no solutions, then it can be grievances, then it will go to the grievances and finally they have to take the actions. So, Anything disturbs the employee, whether or not the unrest is expressed in the words, that is the dissatisfaction. Complain, complain is spoken or the written dissatisfaction brought to the attention of the supervisor or the shop steward. Grievance is a complaint that has been formally presented to a management entity or to a union officials. The grievances can be uncovered in a number of ways. Gossip and uh, the official of the Indians offer vital clues about the employee grievances, red boxes, open door policies, periodic interviews, exit uh, surveys will also be undertaken to uncover the mystery surrounding the grievances. There are a lot of processes are there. 
the way you can handle the things. These methods are doing the open door policy as is their observations and the gradient procedure and what you process for all of them. And exist no interview source. So these are all of the different different ways. Form of gradients is the the gradients is may take any one of the following forms. Factuals. The factual gradients is arises when the legitimate needs of the employees remain unfulfilled. A delay implement. Now imaginary is another form. When an employee's discretion is not because of any valid reasons, sometimes it has happened, but because of the wrong perceptions, wrong attitudes, and the wrong informations he has. So such a situation may create an imaginary grievance. Actually, uh, it is not a, a real fact. So, though the management is not at fault. In the such instances, still it has to clear the some reform immediately. So that type of things has to be cleared, disguised. An employee may have the discretion for reasons that are unknown to himself. Sometimes it is unknown. The employee don't know. Grievances may occur. For a number of reasons. So now there are some of the listed uh, the below. The, what are the reasons being? Economic. That is one of the reasons where it consists. It is included. You can see the wage fixation, what time bonus, wage divisions. Employees may feel that they are paid less when they compare to the other cities. So this is all on economic. Work environment, poor physical conditions of the workplace, tight productions, norms, defective tools and the equipment, poor quality of materials, unfair rules, lack of uh, recognition, so is the one. Supervisions relate to the attitudes of the supervisor towards the employee, such as perceived notions. Bias, favoritisms, nepotisms, caste affiliations, visual feelings, etc. These are very vital things. Most of the cases, these superficials are very important. More, most of the discussions are start from their results. Work group. Employees are unable to adjust to these callings. These are other issues. Most of the uh, new Entrants, new uh, employees are fa facing these problems. Suffers from the feelings of the neglect, victimizations, and the becomes the objects of the ridicular, ridicule and humanizing, humanitations. So these are all are the reasons. Now features for good governance uh, and leave procedures. So some of the features are. <laughs> Listen here, where you can say it's a good grievance and leave process. Fairness, facilities for the representative representation and the representations. Procedural steps, steps should be limited to three, there should not be so much. Suppose you have applied for the grievance, you have to submit it. And maybe there are six, seven, eight steps are there. That's right. Then it will take a long time, and there is a fair chance solution may not be available in the time frames. So it should be limited to three steps. Promptness is another important. Promptness is needed to avoid the bitterness. And the first issue is why it is needed because the promptness are create a further depressions. 
So who has the team or who has applied for this thing, grievances, who has submitted the grievances at the grievance cell. He or she is waiting for the result. Maybe two months, three months. The time has crossed. So further depression will start. And it will affect the other employees also. Because it is propagated to others also. Oh, nothing will be done because the management are not taking seriously. Files are already lying there, but they are not taking the decisions. So that type of propagations, it will be that type of, uh, it will provoke further for the other employees also. And it is a spreading and we increase the depressions further. So, to avoid these things, as early as possible, the solution should be at post care should be there so that solution can be obtained as early as possible. Then we can say it is a good procedure. Essential prerequisites. Uh, Gradient sanding procedures, some of the things are really required. Conformity with the statutory provisions. Unambiguity, there should not be any ambiguity. Simplicity is required. Promptness and training. And, for us. and finally, we follow up. Discipline is the regulations and the modulation of the human activities. Uh, to proceed with discipline is one of the things because without discipline you cannot uh, control or you cannot reach to the objectives whatever the procedures are things. so control the performance you require the discipline so it is to encourage the employees to confirm to established sensibly and safely at work. So discipline is essential to all organizational group action. So discipline is the regulation and the modulations to the human activities to produce the control documents. The real purpose of the discipline is the quite simple. It's to encourage the employees to confirm the service and standards of the job performance and to behave the sensibly and the simply at the work. Disciplinary action procedures. To start with the uh, based on any misconduct committed by the employees or being complained or the complaint, the preliminary inquiry is called what? Well, it's called because if anything is happened, first things you have to have the inquiry. Then disciplinary authority has to initiate the actions. The following authorities are laid by the organizations for various level of the employee, the disciplinary authority and appellate authorities and reviewing authority and then the, basically the stages of the disciplinary proceedings. So reviewing authority is important by the rule all the proceedings are things. And but the further different case written will by the PO and DEA inquiry report, submission of the report to DEA. There is a lot of stages of this. And the DEA additions, the your minor censor, means DEA in the sense, in this case, it's a disciplinary authority. Then the reduction to lower stage in the rank, removal of the service, so all these things which are, which are, which are what type of actions are required that are can be decided. Or if it is a really industry dispute which will be handled by the industries act in the dispute act. So that too basically there are two, any discipline you see so punishment is not in the sense of things Punishment is also a part of your disciplinary disciplines. 
to uh, to show the employees uh, equality and their honest for those who are honest employees they should be rewarded and those who are dishonest not uh, follow the rules of the organization so they should be punished because otherwise that there should be two things so they cannot equate both the things Okay, two things are different. So some punishment is also there. But uh, some minor punishments, there is a, for example, censor the fine, you can give some of the fines or penalties, and uh, some uh, you know, payment of wages, withholding the increment, stop the increment, suspension of order, like this. So these are uh, all are the your minor punishments. Major punishment is also the demotions, discharge, dismissal. Still, you are communicating the or because these all are the extreme conditions. So trade union is an association either of the employees, of the employers, of the independent workers. It is a relatively the permanent formation of the workers. It is not a temporary casual combination of workers because the form of trade unions are really required in the organizations. When the organizations are big, employees are Population of the employees are more, so management cannot be uh, monitored. Everybody's problem. So union has a responsibility. They have to look after to see their problems and convey to the top management. So there are classical, non-classical, evolutionary, the different form of training is there. Some of the functions are there, the militant or the protective or interim mutual functions. Then your fraternal or the external moral functions, political functions, social functions, all are the trade unions part. What are the objectives of the trade unions? The Wages and salaries is really as per the norms or not, as per the government directives or not, that to cross it. So basically, management are doing all these things, keeping in view of the statutory instruction with the government, but still, this will be validated by the trade union also. Trade union leader and the union leaders should be present. During the formulation of formation of the wage divisions, salaries, and their concerns is also to be well taken. Working conditions and discipline, personal policies, welfare of the employees, and employee employee relations, negotiating the machinery, safeguarding of the original health and the interest of the East. So now, health is one of the issues after COVID, post COVID, most of the companies are, uh, they will increase their budget for the health welfare. So that is also a part of it. Your objectives of the trade unions, your medical facilities, the hospitalizations, are well defined or not, and that is the reimbursement of the economy management. We take it. Now, role of the unions, the sectional bargainers, from white color, etc., because you see the most of the uh, those who are working in the 
corporate levels and these who are in the worker levels, the different dress code are there, will be identified to differentiate the classes, different the class of the workers. Immediately you can identify who are in the which class of uh, which sections. So union representing the interest of the class as well in the trans agricultural unions, federation of the unions, and the civil servant unions. There are so many different countries are in the different roles. USs are in the different, they are with target for the productions, the mixed price. And this is the way partners in the social control. So now uh, I have to discuss some of the uh, classification based on the ideology. Here the revolutionary unions of the, believe in the distractions of existing social economic order and creation a new one. This is one of the ideology. All these changes, some revolutionary changes. They want shift in power and authority and use of force. That is the left unions. Uh, leftist uh, thing they have to always in a revolutionary change. Informatist and the welfare unions is another classification is a work for changes and the reforms within the existing socio-political framework society. That is basically the European models. They are always reforming things with the new technologies or the new form of work cultures. So, all in your trade union companies are there. There is a, your AIT, you see. Then your ILO, international labor organizations. And then subsequently, a lot of uh, development has done formation of AITUC led by the All India Railways Federations and all other the, this is some of the uh, trade unions districts. So the trade union act is also there and uh, your employees organizations Some of the future challenges, the conflict of the different cities, different countries, different scenarios that they are there. So I can skip some of the things which are some of the things that are not done right now. So okay, I think thank you very much. So now today's session is closed here, closed now. In the next sessions we have to discuss some of the case studies and other. Things to so okay, thank you. Namaste. No